Critics have said that this unit acted with impunity, that they were able to go into communities uh, kind of heavy handed. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining the 10 worst police officers in history. Count 15, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. For this list, we'll be looking at 10 authority figures who committed horrible crimes. We'll only be focusing on individuals and their actions, not military police or mass politically motivated violence. What do you make of these stories? Let us know in the comments. Kenneth Bowen, Robert Falcon, Robert Jasevius, and Anthony Villavaso. With hundreds of other officers showing support, the cops charged with murder, referred to now as the Danzinger Seven, turn themselves into authorities. Hurricane Katrina wreaked mass havoc on the city of New Orleans. Not only was the physical damage extensive, but it resulted in a degree of lawlessness as authorities focused on rescue efforts. The result was the Danzinger Bridge incident on September 4, 2005. Bowen, Falcon, Jasevius, and Villavaso were members of the New Orleans Police Department who fired at six people on the bridge. Four were injured, and two, James Brissett and Ronald Madison, were killed. Defense attorneys say their clients are innocent. Now they get their chance to prove it. They certainly are serious allegations, but that's what they are. They're allegations, and we feel pretty confident that we know the facts of this case better than the government does. The victims had done nothing wrong, and the incident was racially motivated as all the victims were black. The officers pleaded guilty to the shooting and all were given prison sentences. Now, if the officers had simply come forward and said exactly what happened, um, that, that might have made the jury look very differently than if they had made false statements, which is very much part of this case. Stephen Caracapa and Louis Eppolito. Caracapa was kind of the understated, stealth kind of person. Eppolito was more of the, you know, I have my fist and my fist will make you talk kind of person. The mafia has ties in law enforcement agencies, and that's proven by the story of Stephen Caracapa and Louis Eppolito. These two men were NYPD detectives who worked closely with the five families of New York City. Their work with the mafia began in the mid-80s, and they proceeded to enact countless incidents that were tied to organized crime. The thinking sometimes with mobs is now I've locked up hundreds of them. The thinking of them is I don't want to tell her anything. She gets divorced from me 10 years, she's gonna put me away forever. They took bribes, committed kidnappings, dealt narcotics, and carried out a series of hits. Authorities started cracking down on the mafia in the mid-90s, prompting Caracapa and Eppolito to flee to Las Vegas. However, they were arrested in 2005 and sentenced to life in prison before passing away in the late 2010s. It gave them two sources of information, and it made it more difficult for anyone to assume that they were working together on other things. Greg Jr., Jason Smith, and Arthur Tesla. It's been 14 years since Atlanta police officers burst into the Northwest Atlanta home of 92-year-old Katherine Johnston. On November 21st, 2006, 92-year-old Katherine Johnston of Atlanta was killed by plain clothes officers, Greg Jr., Jason Smith, and Arthur Tesler. Officers had set up a drug raid at Johnston's house by falsifying an affidavit and obtaining a no-knock warrant. According to them, an informant had revealed that heavy narcotics were being dealt from Johnston's home. They broke in at about 7 in the evening, prompting the homeowner to defend herself. The three officers returned fire, killing Johnston. In a panic, they planted drugs in her house and coerced an informant into lying for them. However, their story eventually fell apart, and the truth was revealed. They were given sentences ranging from 5 to 10 years in prison. The truth of the matter is, it was the process, it was policy and procedure that killed Katherine Johnson. Joseph Medjanowski. He used the job to further whatever it is that he was doing in his criminal life. There was a time when Chicago police officer Joseph Medjanowski was praised for his work in recovering illegal contraband. No one knew that he was incredibly corrupt. Medjanowski worked closely with various Chicago organizations and committed a slew of crimes, like arming gang members and distributing narcotics. What they would do is they would sell cocaine to somebody and Padilla would get paid. And then Mijanowski's partner would pull over the guys he just left with the cocaine. 
He was also known to sell out his own kind and betray undercover officers to curious gang affiliates. Medjinowski was eventually charged with racketeering and a drug conspiracy, and sentenced to life in prison. He made the news in 2022 as the homicide convictions of Juan and Rosendo Hernandez were successfully overturned following proof that Medjinowski had gotten a detective to frame them. It's plain and simple. We want justice for all the men who haven't gotten justice yet. Stacy Kuhn. He has nightmares all the time, and he'll wake up in the middle of the night, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and, you know, actually screaming, don't beat me anymore, don't beat me anymore. This LAPD sergeant made history on March 3, 1991. A motorist named Rodney King was pulled over by California Highway Patrol for excessive speeding. Five LAPD officers responded and viciously beat King with their batons and tasers. Among them was Sergeant Kuhn, who was serving as the commanding officer. The attack was filmed and disseminated in the media, leading to widespread outrage. Kuhn and the other officers were tried but infamously acquitted of all charges resulting in the destructive LA riots of 1992. So as you're seeing the big fires down there, you're certainly seeing smaller fires. They look like they're trying to set a bonfire with the wood remains of this guard shack. Kuhn was later found guilty in federal court of permitting an unlawful assault and sentenced to a lenient two and a half years in prison. We all can get along. We just gotta, just gotta, you know, I mean, we're all stuck here for a while. Let's, you know, let's, Let's, let's try to work it out. Daniel Holtzclaw. In his police interview, Holtzclaw acknowledges Liggins was afraid of him. Did she ever ask you if you were going to shoot her? She did. She was talking about a pistol. An officer of the Oklahoma City Police Department, Daniel Holtzclaw used his power to commit numerous acts of assault. His trial began on November 2nd, 2015, and it saw the disgraced officer facing a whopping 36 charges. Thirteen women accused Holtzclaw of sexual violence and blackmail. And he let me live to tell the story. Big, big mistake. Holtzclaw would run background checks on the women and would coerce them into performing lewd acts in exchange for his silence. He was eventually convicted of 18 charges. Holtzclaw was sentenced to 263 years and was thrown into Oklahoma's Lexington Assessment and Reception Center. Let me ask the jury, is this your verdict, so say you all? Yes. Right. John Burge. After serving time in the United States Army, John Burge became a Chicago police officer and eventually worked his way up to commander. For much of his time in the force, Burge ran what became to be known as the Midnight Crew. This was a group of police officers who actively abused suspects with painful methods and coerced them into making confessions. According to The Guardian, Burge and the Midnight Crew were responsible for at least 118 instances of police brutality. He was ultimately fired in 1993 following an unsuccessful trial launched by one of his victims. Burge wouldn't face lawful punishment until 2010, when he was hit with obstruction of justice and perjury convictions and sentenced to four and a half years in prison. Yes, this is an emotional day beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, it'd be even better when I go upstairs and see that buzzard uh, face the judge. David Carrick. There's no necessity. Yes, there is. Like John Burge, David Carrick served time in the Army before becoming a police officer. In 2001, he joined the Metropolitan Police, which oversees the Greater London area. And by all accounts, Carrick was a horrible person. He received numerous complaints about his work, and his colleagues gave him a nasty nickname owing to his harsh behavior. Carrick was finally arrested in 2021 after numerous allegations were made against him. But why was he allowed to get away with it? for so long. They revealed that Carrick had abused a dozen women that he found on various dating apps, and that this behavior had been occurring since 2003. He subsequently pled guilty to all charges, including 28 counts of sexual assault. That one night changed the whole course of my life. Those involved in the death of Breonna Taylor. You've seen your fair share of crime scenes. You have over 1,200 photos for this one. What? How does this one compare? What does it look like? How would you characterize it? <sighs> Scientifically speaking, I'd say it's a mess. 
2020 was a rough year for police brutality. In the early morning hours of March 13th, 26-year-old Brianna Taylor was killed when several police officers opened fire in her apartment. They identified Taylor's residence as a source of narcotics and forced entry with a no-knock warrant. Mistaking the plainclothes officers for intruders, Taylor's boyfriend fired a warning shot. The officers fired back and killed Taylor. The shooters were identified as Miles Cosgrove, Brett Hankinson, and Jonathan Mattingly. Other conspirators were also identified, including Kelly Goodlett, who falsified the search warrant for Taylor's apartment. By pleading guilty to her crime, Goodlett became the first officer to be convicted in Taylor's death. Brianna Taylor should be alive today. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Derek Chauvin Police brutality continued in 2020 with Derek Chauvin, the member of the Minneapolis Police Department who killed George Floyd. The incident occurred on May 25, 2020, when Chauvin was called for illegal use of a counterfeit bill. Floyd was cuffed on the spot and killed after Chauvin knelt on his neck for more than nine minutes. Autopsies confirmed that Floyd's death was a homicide, and law enforcement agencies criticized Chauvin's use of the restraint technique. I watched his life come out of his body. Why? Because I watched this man murder another man that looked like me. He was eventually arrested and brought on trial to face several charges, including second-degree manslaughter. Chauvin was found guilty on all counts and sentenced to over 20 years in prison. Based on the verdict of the jury, finding you guilty of unintentional second-degree murder while committing a felony under Minnesota Statute 609.19 Subdivision 2, Paren 1, it is the judgment of the court that you now stand convicted of that offense. Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.